Hi, Wycliffe Barrett here, x -Plane Dedicated. Gonna start the series of uh, tutorial videos for the Tolis A321. Uh, the first video will be from Cold and Dark Start and programming the MCDU. Then that's the first video. The second video will be Taxi to the Runway and Departure. Okay. And then the third video will be a little bit of cruise and descent down into an airport. We're on day 15. Got to be very careful what I say, otherwise YouTube will demonetize me. So day 15, let's get into it. I'll see you in the blink of an eye. The toll is A321, um, Airbus A321. Absolutely beautiful aircraft. And uh, as you can see here on stand 13, I think, at uh, Cardiff Airport, British Airways livery. Fabulous aircraft. I, I must admit when this came out, uh, and it hasn't been out that long actually, I was absolutely blown away by this aircraft. Even though a couple of people said, oh, there's, there's this wrong and there's that wrong. I find it very difficult to find out what those things are. But it's not about that. This isn't a review. This is a tutorial. And what I'm going to do is take you through a cold and dark start. Uh, and really the first thing we need to do is have a look at the Tolis Interactive Simulation Control System and this is where you can um, control many aspects of the aircraft and in, in the simulation so to speak. Uh, so I, I think that it's worthwhile going through that you can actually save situations but we're gonna we're gonna be cold and dark and so as as is well known with Airbus, that if a switch is dark, then that means it's on. So you either have off, lit, on, not lit. So we're just looking around the cockpit here. And um, th I think there's a little bit of power on the cockpit. And so we really need to get it completely cold and dark. And once again, we'll go into the... Uh, into the interactive simulation control system just to check as i say this is where you can save situations and over here is uh, engine types and whether you're going to have wing tips and and satcom antenna etc uh, this is the loading uh, performance page uh, this is where you you can configure the aircraft for how you want it loaded. I've just put some extra fuel in there, so just over 10 tons of fuel. Uh, on the right hand side, of course, you can see your uh, CG gross weight diagram. Uh, ground services here, you can have external power, high pressure air and low pressure air. And, and below that, you've got your pushback uh, configurator there. But if you use better pushback, then you don't really need that. Fault scenarios here, I rarely put faults on. I mean, why would you want to fly with faults on unless you're training to be a real ATPL pilot? Uh, and here are the sound settings. You can see how I've got mine set. Uh, the sound in the Tolis is, is, um, is excellent. I uh, find nothing wrong with it. Um, you always find people say, oh, I wish you had this sound or I wish you had that. It's got everything, the PTU, the, you know, the lot. Uh, over here, joystick configuration. Uh, which I have to say I touched none of. I didn't touch any of this. I just installed the aircraft. I went to my um, normal configuration for my joystick in X-Plane 11 and it worked. Um, so I haven't adjusted anything. The one thing I don't use is I don't use the tiller in in uh, the TOLIS. I, I could do, but uh, I could assign a rotary uh, knob to the tiller. I might do that at another stage. General settings, so visual settings, etc. Screen resolution, uh, reflections, and uh, rain effects on the windscreen, which I've turned on. I didn't realize it was turned off. <laughs> Cockpit windows, not windscreen. And then startup behavior. So we've got cold and dark here, completely cold and dark. And I've got hectopascals as opposed to mercury of injuries. Um, and and that's it now um just a couple of other things uh you know sinking the barrel settings for both sides of the uh, uh glare shield and just a couple of other things miscellaneous ils auto line restart required i haven't done that and i'll tell you for why in a little while okay um so i think i just got to save my preferences and we'll be ready to go so preferences saved just uh, checking a couple of things. 
There we go. Yes, I'm quite happy with that. So into the aircraft. It's cold and dark. There is no lights on in the aircraft at all. Nothing is working whatsoever. Um, but I have got ground power and that's available. So as soon as you hit that, you see the overhead light up. And once again, don't forget, if it says white and off, that means it's off. If it's black and no light, that means it's on. So let's just turn on the uh, fuel pumps here. Yep. And this makes put some emergency lights on and probably the beacon lights as well. Okay. So now you can see that the MCDU glare shield has got a uh, detail on and we need to turn up the brightness on the MCDU. It doesn't come on automatically, so you need to turn that up. And it's worthwhile turning up the lights on the lower ECAM, uh, the main ECAM and the lower ECAM. And might as well do turn on the radios. Yeah, and then down to the floodlights, integrative floodlights and floodlights, turn them all up and then turn up the lights on the primary flight display and the flight plan display as well. Navigation display and primary flight display, sorry, uh, on the left hand side. Now of course you have to do this on the right hand side as well. So just check there. Yep. And do the right hand side primary flight display and navigation display. So everything's turned on now. Uh, so it's a case of um, either getting some power into the aircraft. Oh, I need to check the adderus. So turn those on. Yeah. And normally it takes seven minutes for the adderus to align. As you can see there it's saying seven minutes but uh, we can speed that up a little bit by coming up to the uh, tallest interactive screen but first i'm going to start oh, hang on we'll go to the tallest interactive screen and we'll change that you see how it says seven minutes on the left i can do quick align so hit that boom and it's aligned uh, normally i do wait the seven minutes because uh, I'm, when I do the cold and dark start and I'm programming the MCDU, I tend to do the whole thing. So MCDU, time to program it. You know, you can make this into a pop out window, which I have done, and you can move it onto a big, onto another screen and make it as big as you want to see. Okay. Uh, quite handy. We've got a full size cockpit. So, um, first things first is we need to, uh, get some data in here. Uh, so we're going to take a flight from Cardiff EGFF slash EGCC Manchester. So we've put that in there up at the top and you see the other lights come on. Uh, so we need to put in our aircraft uh, IKO. So it's Speedbird 2302. And uh, cost index of 18 I'm going to fly to flight level 280 we might just about get up to 280 before we get to uh, mid Wales okay next page the init B page now if your engines are already running if you if you start the engines or you start the aircraft with engines running the init B page will already be populated if not uh, like me, we're doing cold and dark. This is what you need to do. Okay, so you've got the init B page open there, and we need to pull all that data in there. So we go over to the uh, loading perf page, and there is data here that we need to transfer over into the MCDU. So basically, zero fuel weight configuration, uh, first of all. Um, just get to the right page. Here we go. So zero fuel weight configuration. So it's 27.4. So 27.4 slash 65.3, which is zero fuel weight, 
three. There you go. Put that in there, and you see that on the left hand side of that page, other things are populated. So the fuel in block fuel is 10, and there we are. Populates the left hand side of the init fuel prediction page B. All right, so fairly straightforward stuff there. Don't really need to worry about too much else. It is asking for runway, uh, which you put in on the perf page, the flight plan page and the perf page. So we'll do our flight plan. Uh, I know this flight plan, so departure from runway 30 on a Brecon 1 Alpha departure, put that in. Temporary flight plan, insert. And now you see, because the runway has been selected, we can now select a uh, configuration for slats and flaps so configuration 2 um, we we'll put that over so it's 1 sorry 1 oh no we we'll do the do the um, V speeds first sorry we should get the information down there v1 vr v2 and then we need to put flaps so it's one slash up 1.0 and the uh, shift two shift is uh, 300 meters i think i got one slash it's supposed to be down one slash dn 0.1 put that in there there we go that's it and then make sure that the v speeds are in correctly yeah 131146 and 150 we're not going to use toga thrust that is done yes so there you have it and if you look here, you can see our flight plan because the adderies were already aligned. We did that quick alignment didn't we? rather than wait seven minutes. So on the left hand side, I've got a flight plan. Um, on the right side, we've got plan. There we have it. So the all start, all, all put in, flight plans in. We just uh, adjust the takeoff altitude for 6,000 feet because that is 6,000 feet on the Brecon 1 Alpha and transition is 6,000. I've turned on the beacon lights, emergency lights, and uh, we'll start the APU. Okay, so we'll bring up the APU from the lower ECAM, and you'll see that this will start up when the flap opens, as it will do. There you go, flap is open, and exhaust gas turbine is running and M1 is running on the APU and start engines and just wait oh hang on I forgot the APU bleed put the APU bleed on and you see N2 rising and then the EGT rising exhaust gas turbine see that rising once that stabilizes and in the airbus it's an automatic process and so once that stabilizes uh, all the power will switch over automatically we'll just watch this now just get to the overhead and you'll see it switch over and m1 is coming up M1 rotation. Stand by any second now. There we go. It's available. It'll stabilize. We can start engine two. Once again, on the right hand side, you can see engine two there. N2 rotation is beginning. Electrics have switched over to be run from the engine on engine one and E 
EGT is rising, as is N1 rotation. N2 is almost complete at around about 62-63%. As soon as that goes out, it's 60-62, around about 60. It will tell us that the uh, engine is available. There we go. Flex is is a, available. Flex takeoff is available, and everything's switched over automatically. And we just put that to normal, and there we have it. Two good engine starts. MCDU um, programmed. The aircraft is fully powered. Part two, what we'll do is we'll take off from uh, Cardiff runway 30 and you can see that as I move on to the um, move on to the departure on my way up to Brecon. So we'll see you soon, maybe a day, maybe two days for that second video. Okay, bye.